this is concept e classes and today we'll deal with chapter 4 of class 8 social science from the book social and political life 3 understanding laws so in unit 2 parliament and the making of laws there are two chapters chapter 3 why do we need a parliament which we have explained in the previous video and chapter 4 understanding laws so in chapter 3 we saw how the parliament is in charge of making the laws and after making the laws the question that i come to our mind is do these laws apply to all so in this chapter first we'll see about that and then how new laws come into being and how laws become unpopular and controversial and how the citizens they react to such laws now what are laws laws is a system of rules that are created by a government or a particular authority meant for the purpose of keeping peace and security in a society we are familiar with many such laws like that the law of marriage according to this law the legal age for a woman uh, to be married is 18 years and for a man is 21 years similarly for a person to vote he should be an adult citizen above the age of 18 years similarly there are a lot of laws india it has approximately of about 1248 laws now who is in charge of making this laws it is the parliament so after making this laws are these laws applicable to everyone and how do this new laws come into being and sometimes these laws they become popular unpopular or controversial and if the citizens are not satisfied with this law what would they do under such circumstances so we'll study all about these questions and answers inside this chapter so the first topic is do laws apply to all are the laws same for everyone let's see so before independence the constant assembly agreed that there should be no arbitrary exercise of power in independent india now what do you mean by this arbitrary exercise of power it means like a group of people like for example the british the britishers they made rules based on their own interest rather than following justice so such type of power is called as arbitrary power so the constituent assembly they made sure that no such power should be in independent india and for that they made several provisions in the constitution that established the rule of law and the most important of these provisions was that all persons in independent india are equal before law the law cannot discriminate any person based on their religion the caste or the gender now we studied that the constitution they established the rule of law now what is this rule of law it means that all laws apply equally to all the citizens of the country and no one can be above the law the rule of law states that all laws are equal to every citizen citizens and no one is above the law not even the government official not a wealthy person not even the president of the country is above the law now what happens if anyone does not obey the law or violate the law they will receive a punishment for example if we do not obey the traffic rules we get a penalty or a punishment for the violating the law similarly any crime or the violation of law it has a specific punishment and if a person commits a crime there is a process through which the guilt of the person has to be established now was it always like this in india no in ancient india there were innumerable laws there were a lot of laws and the local laws it often overlapped with each other even different communities based on their own whims or based on their own interest they used to administer these laws for example if two persons committed a crime the punishment they received depend on their caste at that time the lower caste they would be treated more harshly than the upper caste people they would be leniently punished so such type of overlapping often happened during the ancient times but this slowly began to change during the colonial period because the system of law started to evolve so we saw that in ancient india there were many laws and it often overlapped with each other and the people they misused the law now let's see how the rule of law was established in india so 
it was believed that it was a british colonialist who introduced the rule of law in india what was the rule of law the rule of law meant that all the laws apply equally to all the citizens in the country and no one can be above the law but the historians they have disputed this claim because the colonial rule was arbitrary now what do you mean by arbitrary it meant that the britishers they uh, made rules based on their own interest rather than justice but it was the indian nationalist who played a very important role in the development of the legal sphere in british india so let's discuss the claim of how the colonial law was arbitrary so one example of this arbitrariness that continued to exist in the part of the british law is the sedition act of 1870 now according to this act any person protesting or criticizing the british government they would be arrested without any trial so according to the british government many rebellions and resistance took place and according to this act they did not need any evidence to arrest the person and they could arrest and detain any person they want without any trial so the indian nationals found this act very arbitrary another example of the british arbitrariness was the rowlett act and this act was also the same they could imprison any people without any trial many nationalists like our mahatma gandhi they strongly opposed this rowlett act but despite the large number of protests the rowlett act it came into effect on 10th march 1990 and many people started protesting from many areas in punjab on april 10th two leaders of the protest dr satyapal and dr saifuddin kichlu were arrested without any prior trial so to protest this arrest a public meeting was held on 13th april at jalin bala bank in amritsar and what happened was that the general dyer he entered the park with the troops and ordered the troops to fire and several hundreds of people died in this gunfire and many more were wounded too so the indian nationalists they began protesting very strongly and criticizing this arbitrary use of authority by the british so let's see how the indian nationalists played a very important role in establishing the rule of law so the indian nationalists they began fighting for a greater equality and they wanted to change this idea of laws from a set of rules that was to obey to a law as including ideals of justice so they wanted a set of laws that meant for justice rather than just a set of rules to obey so by the end of the 19th century the indian legal progress profession also began emerging that is all the indian lawyers they started demanding respect in colonial courts and they began to use law to defend the legal rights of indians and the indian judges also played a very important role in making decisions therefore in several ways the indians played a major role in the evolution of the rule of law during the colonial period so after independence the document the constitution it served as the foundation on which our representatives began making laws for the country and every year our representatives passed several new laws as well as amend the existing ones for example one such law which was modified was the hindu succession amendment act of 2005 so the old act was the hindu succession act of 1956 it was an act of the parliament that was related to the unwilled succession among hindus buddhist jain and sikh and according to that the females were granted ownership for the property but uh, they were not given equality so this act was amended and according to this new law the sons and daughters and their mothers they can get equal share of the family property that is the daughters would have the same rights and liabilities of the son and they would get equal rights in their ancestral assets similarly new laws have been enacted to control pollution like the uh, air prevention and control of pollution act of 1981 etc and even many laws were passed on employment like the labor laws and many laws have been amended as well so we saw that every year new laws are being passed and many of the laws are being modified as well so the next question is how do the new laws come into being so let's see that in this topic okay so the parliament has a very important role in making laws so there are many ways through which this takes place and it is often the different groups in a society 
they raise the need for a particular law that is a group of people they say that they need a particular law so the important role of the parliament is to be sensitive to the problems faced by the people so let us consider this through an example let's take the issue of domestic violence it was brought to the attention of parliament and let's see how the process was adopted for this issue to become a law so what do you mean by domestic violence domestic violence generally refers to the injury or harm or threat of injury or harm caused by an adult male usually the husband against his wife and abuse of women can also include verbal like saying insults or calling names physically if they injure the wife or sexually or economic abuse etc so these all are coming under domestic violence so let's understand how the issue of domestic violence was brought to the attention of the parliament so before the 1990s the women who suffered from domestic violence they used to go to different forums to report their issues but there were no laws for the protection against domestic violence so throughout the 1990s a need for a new law was raised in different forums and in 1999 the lawyers collective took the lead in drafting the domestic violence bill which was widely circulated and finally the bill introduced in the parliament in 2002 but it didn't have any of the demands that the group suggested so what they did the women they opposed the bill and they formed many organizations like the national commission for women and they made submissions to the parliamentary standing committee and in december 2002 the standing committee submitted its recommendation to the rajya sabha and the lok sabha in the committee's report accepted most of the demands of the group finally that bill was passed to the president and according with his approval a new bill was reintroduced in the parliament in 2005 and the protection of women from domestic violence act came into effect in 2006 hence from this example we can know that the role of citizens is very important in helping the parliament to frame different concerns that the people might have into the laws and at every stage from establishing a new law till it is being passed the voice of the citizen is very important and this voice of the citizen how can it reach the parliament it can be heard through tv reports newspapers editorials radio podcast local meetings etc we have seen how the people raise their voice against a law or when they need a law uh, through their protest and rally so with the help of all this the parliament work becomes more transparent and accessible to the people so let's now see about how the laws become unpopular or how they become controversial so sometimes when a parliament can be unpopular even though it is legal or constitutionally valid it may continue to be unpopular acceptable to the people as the people feel that the intention behind this law is unfair or harmful so these are some of the unpopular laws that have been passed by the parliament so the people they might criticize this law they hold public meetings they write about it in newspapers report to the tv channels etc so in this way the people they criticize about these laws and when a large number of people began to feel that a wrong law has been passed then there is a pressure on the parliament to change the law so let's see this through an example of a municipal law that prohibited the hawkers and street vendors to uh, do the carry on the trade on every road in the city we often find street vendors at the payments in law they say that the payments are meant for the people to walk and uh, when there is heavy traffic but the hawkers it is their means of livelihood they provide many essential services very cheaply to millions of living so in one case the people they have to walk through the payments and in other case every citizen have the right to carry on their trade so if the law favors one group and disregards the other it will be controversial and would lead to conflict so people who think that the law is not fair they can approach the court to decide on the issue and the court has a power to modify or cancel it so if the people feel that these laws are 
unfair to them they start protesting against these unjust laws and they show their unity by performing a campaign by doing a rally so being a democratic country they are free to express their unwillingness so in the present one such ongoing protest is the farmers protest which is against the three farm act uh, passed by the parliament in september 2020 The protest actually started in Punjab then it spread to Rajasthan Haryana then about 10000 farmers they marched to Delhi to show their unwillingness against the three acts So we need to remember that our role as citizens does not end up with just electing our representatives rather we should use newspapers and media to carefully chart the work that is being done by the MPs that we selected and we should criticize their actions if required thus it is the involvement and the enthusiasm of the people that helps the parliament perform its representative functions properly so that's all for this chapter understanding law tune in soon for the next session thank you so much may god bless you all take care and bye bye